Many parents are concerned their children with special needs are falling through the cracks. WVTM 13 Xavier Harris spoke with some mothers who hope answers are on the way. To me, it's unacceptable. Rhonda Bush says her son with special needs had to do virtual learning when the pandemic started and ran into problems. The teachers worked really hard to make that work. It wasn't an ideal situation. She says the best way her son can learn is face to face, but she knows going inside a building with other students could be dangerous. He is actually allergic to one component of the treatment for COVID. So my son's allergic to antivirals. So if he were to contract COVID and had a, a severe case, then um, we could have a really, really bad outcome. Sarah Bishop, who also has a child with special needs, sees the same issues with virtual learning. Having several different passwords for different um, programs that he had to log into and he didn't know how to log into something. Our kids, with special needs, we're missing some of the important therapies that they are entitled to by law. Yesterday, Jefferson County's health officer sent a letter to superintendents containing guidance for reopening schools. There was no mention of special needs students. But tomorrow, the Special Education Advisory Panel and the Alabama Department of Education will hold a virtual meeting to address just that. If there has to be virtual learning, there needs to be more one-on-one -on -one instruction virtually. And hopefully give parents the peace of mind they need. In Birmingham, Xavier Harris, WVTM 13.